I'm now streaming. Uh, I haven't turned the computer audio on yet, so you can probably hear my voice on the stream and see me talking on the stream, etc. Uh, but you probably want to turn the audio off, and I'm not going to turn the desktop audio on till everyone is sure they've got their uh, audio off on the stream. I think we just lost our post. Yeah. Yeah, we're using the Discord audio at the moment. We're not bothering using the audio function on live stream. We might want to try that one other day. Um, so what I'm going to do now, that stream should be up. So if everyone can check the stream, but make sure your audio's off, then I'm going to. So, so when you're viewing the stream, make sure you either you mute the volume on the stream. The reason for doing this is I'm going to shove the audio of us talking through the stream. So that will create immense feedback problems um, if any of your audio is turned on potentially. Or, or at least an echo. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Cool. Uh, and can you guys see the stream? Twitch. The normal place. Okay, good. Right, so, so, so my next step here is I'm gonna turn the audio on so it goes out via the stream. So make sure you've got audio muted. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Delayed for me. <laughs> it's funny seeing him talk, and then it shows up about two seconds later. So now the audio should be streaming as well. Yep, I, I can hear you, but it's just delayed by about two, two and a half seconds or so from your video, from from the video. The Twitch video is delayed by at least two, two and a half seconds. I'm going to also have to turn my local streaming of my mic off here, otherwise I'm, you, they're going to hear me twice as well. Nope, I don't hear an echo. Yes, but if you were listening to the stream, you would, wouldn't you? Uh, oh, I'm not. I've muted the stream, and I, I'm apparently I'm connected to Discord. Yeah, I think if you were to listen to the stream now, you hear, oh, I see. you'd hear me, you, and everyone else who's talking over that. Plus, you'd hear me talking, but the me talking okay. would be before the other stuff because there is obviously a delay through Discord, right? Okay. So I'm just going to turn that off now. Uh, technically, I, I really don't need Twitch right now because I can see you through Visual Studio and hear you through Discord, so I don't need Twitch. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's about two and a half seconds delay to three. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Gotcha. Pretty cool. <laughs> One thing I don't understand is is why the audio is working because under Discord it says it only works if the browser has the focus. Are you you must be running Discord in a browser? You I'm hear running that? the I can hear you. Yes, I am running yeah, I'm running it in a browser at the moment. But it said it will only work if but you can hear me anyway. It doesn't seem to be a problem, which surprises me because I because uh, Visual Studio has the uh, VS Code has has the uh, focus at the moment, and yet you can still he hear me from the browser. Yeah, possibly. That's true. A virtual machine? Would you um, do you what? What OS? What's your main OS outside of the virtual machine? Windows or something? I'm running Windows Ten. Okay. Then I do all my coding. I do my coding in in Ubuntu, so ah, okay. I'm running a virtual box VM. Got it. So, so at the moment I've got I've got Discord and VS Code in Ubuntu, and I've got Twitch in Windows at the moment. <laughs> But it appears to be working. So, William, which part of Florida did you say you're in? I'm f originally I'm from St. Petersburg, which is on the western side, on the Gulf side, about about halfway down the state. You have Orlando. So if you were to go from Orlando, you would drive west to the coast um, and you would hit St. Petersburg there. But right now I'm I've been living right. for the last 25 years on northeast Florida, which is just on the edge of the state of Georgia. So I'm on the other coast, on the east coast, on the Atlantic Five. side. <laughs> yep. I've been, I've been. Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, you, 
<laughs> yeah. That's true. I don't well, could anyone kind of hear on this stream? They have to join to actually hear the stream, don't they? Oh, that's true. That's right. You're on I forget I'm on broadcasting on Twitch now. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I forgot about those doxing assholes. I'm back, guys. It's interesting, Al, when I watch your feeds on Twitch, though, how they start off with the sun is up. And by the time you're finishing them, closing out, it's completely dark, but yet it's broad daylight here. Yeah, that's true. I always notice that as well. On the background, the window is always lit and it ends with the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be permanent dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bummed that I didn't get to see the SLS launch. So we were we went outside to watch it, and uh, and for no, no, it it sat on the pad like a big fat twenty billion dollar spaceship. Yeah, the, NASA pretty much told them, it's like, look, guys, you got to figure this out. We're not rolling it off the pad back to the barn. You got to launch this thing. So they're telling them to repair it on the pad and get it ready for the end of this month. <laughs> it had hydrogen lakes, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was the valve that was feeding the hydrogen into the main main high pressure uh, intake that was uh, leaking there so it wouldn't force the hydrogen into the coolant on the bell and stuff and I think NASA probably went back to Northrop Grumman and said all right guys let's get this <laughs> fixed you got SpaceX two pads down that is launching twice almost twice a week and you guys can't get this big thing off the ground and uh <laughs> Well, uh, to be to be fair, it's not new. Actually, all those parts are from the shuttle. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Anywho, fun, fun. Well, SpaceX is taking its time with its Starship, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Haven't seen any explosions lately, so I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it for the explosions? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is kind of entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they finally got the clearance to... Um, when they are ready, somewhere in November, December, they're going to attempt to launch that behemoth um, in a low Earth orbit. So that'll be cool. Right over my head, too. They're going to launch off of tech. Well, no, I think they're going to launch their first one out of Cape Canaveral, where the where SpaceX currently launches from. They're building the tower there now, so we'll see. The tower's almost tall enough. I could probably see it from my house. <laughs> yeah, if it's that close, the explosion wouldn't be entertaining for me, for sure. Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely.
pair programming? Collaboration? <laughs> <laughs> that pair pro we call it pair programming here in the U.S. When I'm online with my fellow colleagues, uh, they call it pair programming from the agile world. Pair suggests two, though. I know, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hack. I think we're a mob. We're a mob. Yep, I agree. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have the. We we need the maestro if we're an ensemble, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh they well i sometimes do it depends on if we're actually going through code like we're doing now yeah i would show i would share my desktop with my co-worker Oh, publicly. Uh. <laughs> yeah, they're great. Could it be because it's being used by Discord? It's it's funny because they probably hear us, <laughs> but not you. Al's laughing all by himself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, maybe um, Okay, I've just turned my audio on and I can see that affecting it. Um, can one of you guys just temporarily uh, check the audio from you guys, but don't press the push to talk so that you can hear us guys, just to see if I'm included? I don't know, yeah. maybe... I'll maybe... do it. I'll okay. mute myself from the Discord and, and I will hear the stream. Okay. Right, so we can continue talking as normal. Um, we're going to see right. if Weston can hear all of us. Um, yeah, I haven't had my push to talk, but right. I so, might switch to push. Uh, I'm just going to do a one, two, three, four, five. You can all do that as well. Um, actually, I, I heard you already. It's uh, it's working, but your your sound is a bit low on the stream. It's a bit lower, at least. Okay, let me just make an adjustment. I can see it's actually lower. If you guys talk whilst I talk. Yeah, for what push to talk, I have. <laughs> yeah, I'll see if I can hear them as One. well. I'm, I'm not on push to talk. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Just say something, guys. One, two, can you hear, three, can you hear us four, talking then? five. I can hear you, Laurie. One, two, three, four. I was wondering if Weston can hear us on the uh, right now. It the should be. Hopefully, stream the the audio should be a bit working. more balanced now on the stream.
you want to give it another check, Boris Weston? I, I checked it. It's it's working, but uh, it's quite low, <laughs> the volume. I had to low everyone in order to get, because mine's kind of up full. But that could be a problem. Um, can I change the overall volume? So my level is good on Discord, it's just low on the stream. Yeah, that is the impression I have. Wowza. Um, can I solve this? Do, do, do. Um, but, um, all, all of our voices are pretty equalized, so um, the viewers will probably use a higher volume than I use here talking to you guys. Yeah, okay. So let me do the intro again. Uh, apologies, folks, if you've just been looking at me and hearing lots of voices other than mine. <laughs> I didn't realize mine wasn't coming through. We're doing, we're attempting something slightly complicated here on the stream. So. We are attempting to do some coding together and we are connected to each other using audio streaming as well. Now the levels may be slightly lower, you may have to crank them up slightly. That's the only way we can seem to get things adjusted such that our levels are similar. And you might find that my audio is slightly ahead of the others, which is probably gonna make for a slightly weird stream, but we're kinda gonna go with it. I guess when I play it back, I'll see how wacky that looks. Um, so the idea is we continue with the black crab work here, but I'm not going to be doing it alone. I'm going to be doing it mob fashion with <coughs> Laurie, iPost, I'm not hearing and Western. At the moment. <coughs> I think it's because of the push to talk. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't push to talk whilst I was telling everybody what was going on in the stream. I must remember to do so. <coughs> Sorry, I had a cough then. Right, I guess we're just getting on with it for the moment and assume that it's all working okay. Uh, first thing we've got to do is remember where we were with Black Crab. Hold on. Um, the, up, the other thing that may be a problem here is I'm having to use quite a small window. Um, when it comes out on your end, guys, is it a small window? Is it the same size window that you see on the stream? No, I can see full size. Ah, right. Okay, so you can deal with that. Right. Cool. So, uh, one of the things I need to do is we need to basically um, implement the traits that we've applied to the flash which are similar in many ways to um, to the ice programming uh, and in particular we've got to implement this run which runs everything um, but it must call prep first act which is the action, and then a completion step. If it needs them, it may not. It may not need all of those. I can tell this is going to get tricky when I actually start typing. I forget to press that push to talk key. Right. So um, the other thing that we're probably going to need is let me give you the. Don't have the link for the data sheet. I'm running this locally, this data sheet. Um, I can, however, I can, however, I'm just paste. I'm seeing a lot of underlined errors on the on the code. Is everyone else seeing that? Yeah, I'm seeing yeah. it. Same. 
That's good. Is there a reason? Yeah, the reason oh, is... Is there a reason why you've got all that red underlined there? Yeah, it's because all that stuff's wrong. Uh, mm. Those underlined squiggles are telling me there's an error in my code. Remember how pedantic Russ can be? There's an awful lot of them. Uh, that's purely because yeah, I... There's so many of them. I mean, it's un... I will uh, get rid of that in a sec, Laurie. Yeah, I think it's an include problem. Like, it doesn't recognize right. the command and things like that. Yeah. Not only that, I just copied and pasted stuff. Okay, then that's probably the reason. <laughs> so there's probably a whole lot of junk there, right? We'll get to that shortly. Um, so let me just paste. I'm going to paste the data sheet uh, number. Um, I think you forgot to push the talk. Yeah, I was wondering if he should at least turn that off so that yeah. maybe we use it, but not him. Yeah, if, if he has headphones, you should be fine without push the talk. It's a good idea, guys. Let me see if I can do that setting. Uh, meantime, you may need to do a search on Google for that uh, part. Because uh, I don't have a hyperlink to the data sheet, but that is the part that you must do a data sheet search for. Normally, okay. the, normally right. the best place to do that actually is Octo part. DigiKey is listing it. Yeah. They're listing it, but the link goes to a dead, dead place. Try Octo part. part. Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> I found it on Octopart. Yeah, I have it too. I'm just going to try and change my voice settings, so bear with me. This is now not push to talk, just regular. Let me know if you can hear me, guys. Yeah, yep. it, it works fine. I also don't hear myself, so that's good. Cool. So we shall proceed. Um, so yeah, it might be useful to obviously have that data sheet as a reference when we come unstuck. Um, so let's look at this code. Um, there is one other thing. Let me just check. I found a really horrible bug in this live share um, which I will come back to in a minute uh, can you see right I've just stopped sharing my terminal did you notice that yeah I don't have a terminal anymore Now, the reason I've done that is because the nasty bug is when you share your terminal, you can make it read only. However, when I tried this myself, I could quite easily issue commands, even though it was marked read only. Yeah, I was actually wondering if I could execute <laughs> uh, commands on your machine by typing into the terminal. Yeah, and that would be weird. Well, that's kind of a fairly big security hole, right? 
Anyhow, so I've stopped sharing the terminal for the moment. We probably don't need that, but you know, in some cases we would need that. So I'm going to look into that at some point. Right, moving ahead then. So uh, what we did last time, let's just review. One of the things that I did was created basically uh, the instructions that I thought we need, which are these ones. I tell you what, you guys will see the highlighting much better than the stream. My local highlight color is crap. I need to find out how to change that, but that's for another day. Um, so these are the instructions that I have coded the commands for or enumerated. Okay, and then there's a few other things I enumerated last time as well, which are the things that we might need, such as the page size. And the page size really determines how much we can write um, to the flash at a time, I believe. We can send up to 256 bytes per transfer. And the sector size is the smallest size we can erase. Oh, twinkles here. Oh, just passing through, open the door for me, human. So, um, I'm just going to stick with that sector size for the moment, but you, we can erase larger sizes than that. Um, so there's a 4K, I think 32K, 64K. Um, I haven't bothered putting the others here. And there is actually a chip erase. So if we look at these here, uh, those are the 4K, 32 and 64Ks and there's a chip erase as well but we'll, what we'll probably do for now is just focus on the 4k erase okay so if we write anything because it's flash you have to erase before you write okay so the order of, or sequence has got to be um, given any right um, you need to erase the sector you're going to write to, or the sectors, if there's more than one, and then you're going to write in incremental pages um, into that given sector. So the code needs to be sector aware um, when it's doing the writing to the flash, because it obviously needs to take account um, any coverage that includes any sector must include the erasure of that sector prior to writing. And I believe normally in Flash that means it writes FF um, to the um, to each address within the sector when it's erased. Um, so we, we're going to need a bit of code that actually is sector aware. Uh, so that's the other reason for um, providing these kind of enumerated constants here because we're going to need those. So the first thing I guess we should probably do maybe we, we, we are already talking to the SPI so let me show you that first. Um, you'll be able to see this on the stream by the way but not in front because I'm not turning the terminal on yet. But if we run this, we actually, it goes out um, and talks to um, the flash and it returns the ID because the last thing we changed was, it was at the end, sorry, of the main call, I think. No, forgive me, it was in flash. There was already some commands that were written here not the traits, but commands that already existed. Here we go. So one of the functions or um, one of the implementations on the flash is this ID function. And what I did last, that actually returns the information from the flash when we actually start the code up. And what I did last time which takes us up to date is I added those new enums rather than the hard references that we had before. Um, 
So I can just show that on the stream. Um, I can't yet because all this code in here is going to stop this being active. So temporarily, what I'm going to do is just comment out a bunch of this. And I can't do this slow enough to just select that implementation action for flush. So I'm just going to temporarily comment that out because if we have that in there, it won't compile. The other thing that won't compile because it's going to complain that we're not using it is this crate because we're importing the action trait. We're not using it. So I'm just going to do that as well. Now if I save that, I should be able to run that and then we should be back to a working thing before we move on to actually getting any of this working. Uh, again, you can't see the terminal, guys, but it is on the stream if you've got that video up. Okay, so it's running it here, and you see at the bottom of the terminal in the stream, um, it actually outputs CID from that function call. Um, I forget what these different fields are. If you were look, looking at the uh, data sheet, it's probably something like manufacturer and device detail. I would guess. Wouldn't one be the uh, product and the other one's the vendor ID? Quite possibly. First. Let me just do a quick search and we can see. exactly what those are. Oh, ID's bringing up a lot of hits. Hold on, let me just be more specific here and say read ID. ID. Okay, so what does it say here? Identification information can be read from the device to enable the system to electronically query an identified device. The third method for doing so is the JDEC standard read manufacturer device 9FH, which is the one we're running. Uh, method described section 11.1 on page 30. Um, to read your identification information, okay. I've got a hyperlink here that I can't click on. That's not that at all. Page 30. Well, one minute, 11.1. .1. Okay, so what that returns is uh, manufacturer ID is the first byte. Yes. For a desco, that should be zero, 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 one, quadruple one, or one F, which in the stream, uh, it's very difficult to show up the terminal. So you've got zero, zero, then one F, which basically says that that's a desco. And then you've got eight, six, oh, one. Uh, 86 is the family code for the AT25SF series. Uh, density code 16 megabit. And the subcode is the product version. Um, in this case, it's 01. So it's version 1. So the 86 is the family code, and it also which is the 100 part of that. And then the uh, second part is the 0110, which means 16 megabit. So 86H. 
So that's what that is. Um, so we know that uh, that is at least right. So what we've got to do now is take a look at enabling um, this and we've got to move on and start implementing. So let me just uncomment this again. We'll probably get rid of some of this stuff. Finally. Uh, we go. Now, um, if we give it a few seconds, it will work out what's wrong here. It's not squiggling them, showing the errors yet, because it's not quite run the analysis, but it will catch up. So, um, I guess what would be, what would be, now that we, we obviously know that we, our conversation is working uh, at a low level with the device, so that's good. So our next step is to move on to, I'm guessing, something like a read or do we do a, an erase and write first? Which order should we do this in? Suggestions, folks? Let's not do the erase and write first. Erase and write. Okay, well, let's think not, about that. Not going to get anything from the read. Well, we'll probably just... If you just did a read straight away, you'd, you'd, prob probably you'd probably get FFs. FFs. Yeah. Is it worth checking for the FFs? It's probably pretty meaningless, right? Um, but to prove that the write works, we'd need read to work. So maybe we should do the read first. Well, it's kind of a chicken and egg for I know because you read FFs. Yeah, that's that's I think good logic. We we would expect if we were to read it now, FFs, right? Yeah, so you know what to expect on the read. So I, I think we should do read first as well. So let me, I've, I've got to remind myself how this works. So what the stuff that I've pasted in here is the code that we used to write to the ICE-40. So, um, in this case, uh, the first thing we did, so the this, this line, the run function of this uh, interface is called um, from the USB command. So, let me just, I'm just going to pop to a high level so I can set the context for this. So, if we look at how that's being called, um, this is within the USB code. Okay, so what's happening here is we are decoding what's coming in over USB. We are turning that into a command according to the format that we've been using before to write to QSpy Mem and to program it. And then under any given command, um, we then do something. So in this case, the only command I believe that we've implemented is the uh, juice by bus right. Um, so in this in this instance, what it does um, is it calls the run part of the action trait, but it calls it on the ICE FPGA itself. So what we'd be talking about implementing here, if we wanted to see uh, a read uh, or a write, um, and we haven't implemented any readbacks yet, I don't believe. So we could be binding off quite a lot by doing read first, I've just thought. Um, I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure that we're sending anything back at this point with the current ICE programming. I can't remember. Can you, Laurie? I don't think so. So, if we were to do I the... I don't think it's sending anything back, no. Yeah, so maybe doing the read first might not be such a good idea. However, we do need a way 
of checking what's there. Um, one thing that we could do is rather than do it remotely and add this complication in the layer, is we could do something in the same way that we're running when we start up, we're running the um, um, the identity query. Let me find that. We could run some sort of test or whatever. Um, where am I running the ID query? Set BSD. Set up the ice. There we go. So um, here we create the new ICE FPGA device. We do that. Here's, here's the line that calls the flash ID function. So similarly, we could, for example, after doing this, you know, before we get into doing the more complex USB stuff, we could say uh, flash byte um, and then call here uh, run temporarily. So we're, we're calling the run um, part of the trait of flash okay and whatever that returns we're going to put up just in the same way that we did with the flash id already it's got an issue with this because the arguments aren't there this could be a problem because this is expecting the arguments for from the usb so if we look at run here, it's expecting the, obviously self, but it's expecting um, the command that we're gonna run and a buffer and a number of bytes. Because normally we'd be returning an array so array of bytes so um maybe we could have a i guess we could create this these two locally for this purpose Um, so give me my clue. No, give me a clue. Blank font size. All right. So let's just create these. put these arguments in in order to satisfy the uh, function call. So it's now happy with those, right? This, uh, it was flash device, wasn't it? 
I've already done this in the ID function. I know I'm doing it at the moment guys, I'm going to hand over to you shortly and let you do some of this, but I just want to get the ball rolling. So I probably can't see this yet, Flash Device, we probably need to bring that in. Um, here, use create command action flash, so we probably want to add to that. Um, so all I'm doing here is I'm bringing this into the scope of the code that where we're putting this, i.e. the startup code. Okay, so I'm, I'm importing that from the current like crate. We have to do that when we're using the Arctic stuff because our imports here are individual for this app task. So we now should be able to see that. Al, one thing that, that's a bit Al, one, one thing that's a bit confusing at the moment is that you've got two versions of the flash uh, commands. You've got the uh, the STM version and the SPI version. Right. And I don't think you really need both. Okay, let me get this done first, then it might be a good idea to fix those, and I'll have you do it, mate. Hold on. Why isn't this picking up? Surely that should be picking up that flash device. Can it not see that, maybe? Resume. I'm trying to be one, by the way. I should be able to see this, but it's not showing me the... Um, Showing me, oh, damn it. Let me just copy this, guys. That's a command I want. Once this is done, we can go and look at what. Um, I'm just going to save this. It should double check this now. Yeah, it's having a problem seeing that run implementation. No method name run family start flash flash because this is no longer compiling because it's probably caught up now and realize realizes that this isn't it's still not showing me the squiggles, interestingly, the errors. Um because what I'm gonna do is yes there's a match command uh, prescale do I want to do that I don't want to do any of that let me just do um, there is in Rust a do nothing thing but I've forgotten what it is so let's just put comment want to get rid of all the stuff that could be upsetting it first before we can move on. the target just going to comment that out for a sec you just want to get it to the point where it's compiling A 
Let's where was the back look? So at the moment, right, it can't see command. Can you see those guys? Those squiggles. Yeah. That's because we haven't brought that in yet. Okay. So the moment I bring that in, then their squiggle should disappear. Yeah. But now it's complaining it doesn't know what var is. Because var was I think a um something that existed on um on the ice object. So maybe can we can we add that to the struct? moment it's just got two pins maybe we can change this to add those in because we will need these the the internal variables are for tracking moving through the buffer um, so they were useful with the ice device so they're bound to be useful with this so if we look at the FPGA um, that structure had a thing called var yeah Uh, so we can add that in the same way to our flash. But this is going to cause another problem that I'm going to have to solve before we can get to your bit, I'm afraid. Um, because when we create this structure with new, uh, which we'll see later, it doesn't know about that yet. Yeah. So when we create new, the first argument is that, because it thinks that's the fact it doesn't know about that thing that we just added var but if we look at the FPGA um, it's new what does it do hmm can you see that guys on the FPGA? What it does when it creates yeah. a new one? So it's passing in the pins here, but it's also passing in um, this other structure. Hmm. Do it though, it's gotta wait. So it's broken its inputs into two Oop. pieces here, which is slightly different. So this is uh, a definition on how to declare a, an FPGA type of struct. Yeah, and we're going to do something similar. So what we can do temporarily is we need to add that bit, I guess. Uh, yeah. To the flash new. going to rearrange this so it's a bit more readable. Yeah. Because we've added this new part to the structure, when we're running our new function, the creation function that creates the structure and it creates it self-referentially as um, a singleton, which is the pattern we're following. Um, because we've added this var part to the structure, we need to pass in a valid var yeah, on the creation of that structure. I see this is squiggling. Why is that squiggling? This is structure var, but it's there now. Oh, I see. I need to put it here. Uh, oh, I've just got it wrong. Yeah. So now when this creates it, it's passing in this action bar. 
and the action bar as I mentioned before even though I'm not showing you here um, holds within it um, here we go I think you have to include it though because it's uh yeah yeah but these are the things can you see in the controls the rs file when i switch files does it switch for you guys yeah it does it right does. okay i wasn't aware of whether it's doing that or not so that action var is defined here so it can hold a command locally uh width i need to check i can't remember that's something to do with the addressing mode of qspy length i how much data we're moving the index into that data as we're processing it previous index if we were iterating target was used because it knew, it knew in this case how big the whole transfer was going to be so it could count down from that which may have been different from the length because we may have been sent several packets yeah you know, and Len may deal with the local packets anyhow so we've added that now in to um, to our uh, sorry our new our creation of this however we can't see that yet because I haven't had I haven't imported the crate so now that's why we had to squiggle with it so I'm get rid of this now we're now using this fully so when I go back to here maybe everything that's referencing var will now not be complaining, right? Yeah, it's just a well, QSPI thing. That one is still complaining. Maybe it needs to catch up. QSPI. Um, are we using that? Bar, action bar, new command. QSPI with single. So we do need QSPI, right? Yeah, I think that's why you, that line on the bottom is also uh, red. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's just add that in. Um, I don't know. It's going to be use crate. Is it going to be not action flash FPJ? That's going to be. Ooh. Let's have a look. What does FPGA have? Cheat. Control. Body. I think you have an extra set of double colons. Okay. I'm just going to copy and paste. That's being pulled in from a different crate, not our local one, not our own. That needs to go somewhere separate, so let's put it up there. I'm trying to keep these things together, so it should find those now. But we may find it complained because it can't see one of these being used. So I've probably got strict, um, well, that allow dev code may, I think only applies to this, this one here. So it might complain about this when we compile. But if we work our way back down now, it's not complaining about QSPI. We're looking good. There was one I've missed just up there that I saw. But I think we're good. Um, what is it complaining about? I, saw, I just saw something. View size. Okay, so again, the FPGA must have this, right? But I don't see that in the FPGA. Is that not you, view size? Yeah, it uses view size. Where's it getting its U size from that we're not say, seeing? Can anyone see U size anywhere? Too strange. Am I not viewing any of this? Maybe it's a device? Uh, yeah. 
quite possibly. being used in code but not mentioned at the top. I think, yeah, it must be one of these more generic ones. Uh, are we bringing in... But is you say this is defined on hull or uh, by you? I think it's got to be defined somewhere but I'm not quite sure where it's picking that up from, why it works in FPGA but not. Let's look at the main, okay. Is this bringing in that? Two size is a, is a standard rust thing, isn't it? Well, I'm just checking. Like U8 it, except for the... Yeah, I, I can see it being used, but I can't see it um, being defined. Imported. So that's interesting. So why is it complaining here? Oh, maybe. Hmm. So on the FPGA, where do we need stuff? Hmm. That's the same. U size equals nine, right? So it's complaining about it here. Is it complaining anywhere else? It's only squiggling there, right? Is this a real error? No, no, no. Or but is it's, it's, uh, it it's actually sorry. It's it's actually complaining. Failed to resolve use of undeclared type QSPI with. Oh. If you hover oh. over the red thing, so it's actually the next line. Failed to resolve undeclared type QSPI. That's got to be a. That's got to be a UI bug, right? Let me just do a save. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> that's a okay. that's got to be a GUI bug, because <laughs> it should have been under QSPI width anyhow, right? Not above yeah. it. Yeah. So that must have been left on the screen when we did uh, like a one character scroll. <laughs> wow. God, talk about chasing rainbows. Um, should we try a compile now? You've got errors down on line 100 now. Okay. Line 100 is giving errors. Yeah. And that's because use fully qualified syn syntax action bar as trait new. Uh, let's have a quick look at what we're doing in the FPGA. We obviously did it right there. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's that whole thing that you showed with the brackets. because I don't have when that does it it does those equal to that um, don't you have to like define impl of, of flash or uh, one sec FPGA. Uh, that's what you're doing yeah okay never mind uh, it's doing new FPGA Actually, this is really confusing. Why is that doing that like that? That's what it returns. No. Oh, I'm confusing myself. Hold on. Why is it doing that? It returns flash bar. SS. Complaining about the return, it's complaining about the new. Is it complaining about the space? Surely not. Or 
maybe that should be the type, not the. That's be because in in FPGA you don't have the var action var inside the new. Yeah, I uh, have it just in the return, right? Yeah, and in the other one, it's it's in the new. I I think that's the problem, or that yeah, would be the problem. Kind of weird. I need to just re-understand what I'm doing here because I've obviously just copied and pasted that badly. So like that. That definitely looks like odd syntax here, especially. Yeah, like there's something funky here, going this on. This bar so right I'm here not, looks odd. <laughs> I'm not understanding this properly. There's another comma in there as well that I don't need. Um, let me just format this in a way so it's similar to the FPGA. So at least it looks similar, right? So basically, what this function is returning is this. Okay, that should now be right. And we don't need that here. This is what we are passed in, sorry. And this is what is passed back at the return of the function. Yeah. That's why I'm getting confused here. So we're creating this structure here. And this is one of the things that we're creating with, that we are putting into var. Uh, whereas these two are the same as those two by name, which is a default way of doing the structures because these are passed in when we call new, whereas this is not passed in. We're creating that within the function. It's just the format and the way that this is structured looks very odd, particularly this, the fact that you've got a flash inside a flash. <laughs> Um, and I don't quite understand why the flash is inside a flash now. But anyhow, that's the right way of doing it. But here you don't have two. Ah, oh, that's my problem. I don't need two. That's my issue. That is why this is messed up. Sorry guys, we are almost point that makes sense. So now it's completely did I not do that right? No? I'm wrong. It is a flat FPGA inside an FPGA. Let me go back. I did it right the first time. Despite it's odd looking. I let's forget about that for the moment. We're gonna have to come back to why that's like that. There is a reason and I've forgotten. But I just want to get it to a point where we can start working on some of the other stuff. So now, what squiggles do we have? This has bus. We don't need to do that. The reason this was there on the ICE 40 was so that we could go and change the frequency at which the SPI was working. Because if you remember when we were doing the black ice, sorry, the black crab code, the um, when we were programming the ICE 40, we were programming it using SPI, but we had to program it at relatively low frequency, i.e. less than about 16 megahertz, because that's as fast as the programming went, which I don't think is down to how fast the SPI peripheral is. It's more about um, um, how fast internally it's doing the SPI transfers it's interpreting those and writing to its internal MUX arrays and that to set its um, parameters up and its internal memory up. Um, so we had to up, I believe, the uh, divisor clock for the, for the SPI transaction, um, unlike the QSPI which worked at a higher speed. Now, obviously with the flash, with its own SPI bus, we don't have any of that, so we don't have a bus parameter as part of the structure of the flash. These are the only parts that we have. Okay, so I've just gotten rid of that. Any other squiggles? Yeah. Oh, why is it having an 
issue with gold? Is it actually an issue? Is that because we're not actually returning anything here? Um, to return, we don't actually need the return word from Rust. We just do. In fact, let's just do false because this should fail by default, right? And then I do a save. Hopefully, that squiggle goes. Yeah, it's just being pedantic and saying we're not returning anything. You have the opposite on the next function. You're returning on on a function without a return. <laughs> okay. Um, on yeah. act. Let me look at control. So trait action act. Yeah, there is no return. That's interesting. So why do we have that for the FPGA stuff? Let's have a look. Do we have that for the FPGA? Test case file. Reset. Read, write, command, act. No, we don't. Don't know. Okay, so that's a mistake. Let's get rid of it then. Good spot. Another one here. But let's just make it happy, right? Just trying to get it to a point where it will, it, I can compile before we start doing the other things. Yeah. So, uh, in order to start, run must return something, right? It returns true or false. So it can't return. So if we remember what we're doing here, we're expecting it to return something here. And that's not the case. So let me take that out here. And let me oops, put that in there. What I'm expecting to happen now is that it's going to modify this buffer. So here, I want to just take that first byte. Yeah. Are you making coffee, Laurie? I'll have one or tea. I'll have a tea. Mm. No. Why'd you say that? No, I just heard some noise in the background. I saw your light go on, so I'm guessing it's your you doing something, not me. Just wonder if you can hear the lightning on mine. No, I haven't heard that. Have you got a storm going? Yeah, it's uh, striking really close to the house right now. <laughs> it may lose my internet. Okay. Well, as long as it doesn't come down the wire to me, mate. <laughs> We've had loads of storms here the last few days. It's been making up oh. with rain after the dry period. Yeah, I understand you've had a drought recently. Yeah. That's really noisy, Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so what I'm saying here is we're going to do this run, which returns true or false, which I'm ignoring the return at the moment. It may well complain about that. And then we're going to look at the first character in that array, which is what we're going to put in it. OK. Um, we may actually want to change that to print more than one character, but let's just leave that as it is. That's saying R oh, print error. Why is that having an issue? Prints to the uh, why is it complaining? Unexpected token. Range from 0 to 15. That's uh, Unexpected token. What is it that's unexpected? Is it not like that? It that this is a U eight. 
and that's expected in 32 bit. Do you think? Would that be it? Is it that clever? So if I made that two, no, 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 it can't be that. Is it because we are not recording this? Got any clues? Oh, it doesn't like buff. Look, yeah, but it's weird because it's defined just above it. Yeah, I'm just wondering is this a slice type issue? This should be the same because that was the type that um, add semicolon. Is that what it prints? Right. Run command. Oh, yeah, I've got the type here. I don't need that. That's what's confusing it. Oh, no. That's it working out what sort of um, what type that is automatically. Or is it doesn't seem to be able to do that with this. Do I need... Maybe I just need to do maybe that. Do I need that there? Okay, that's happy now. Just being a div. Yeah, but I think that's because the definition, because of the equal there, after the two points on the buff. Sorry, what was that, Weston? I missed that because so you're, it, you're it expects a mute the other side. Yeah, but you're saying let buff two points equal, and I, I think oh, you yeah, have to yeah, yeah. erase one of those. Yeah. Now it seems to be working it out. What's that dot dot? Yeah, I will hit save to see because I think it will complain yeah, again. Yeah. Oh, it's complaining about U8. And why would it be complaining about U8? Is that a semicolon or a colon next to U8? I can't see because somebody's cursor. It on looks it. like a semicolon. <laughs> Somebody's cursor is right over it, so I can't see. Oh, sorry. That's me. <laughs> uh, it's a semicolon. And what should it be? Uh, because we're Colon? defining it here, know. should it be... Should, wait a minute. Uh, expected values now. So when we create this here... It's expecting a value. It's like you have them backwards almost. Yeah, yeah. Let me see but how doesn't I... I'm just going to check oh, how no, I you got it right there. I'm just Line to check. 66 is correct. Let me oh. just check on um, on here. Ah, we set a value to make them all naught. Look. So let's copy what we're doing here. Sorry, let me go back. I was using the type signature and not the actual value. In fact, what I should do. Is whole goddamn thing.
Do the same here as we're defining in the USB section, right? Hmm. Yeah, why didn't that work? I said to copy that file. Do the same as here. And then. Sorry, being clumsy, guys. Do it there. And I think we might have to do. Um, we might have to do this in that's my ah yeah so we're creating it um, as a buffer here as a thing and then we're passing in as a reference mutable reference or reference to a mutable buffer now if I save hopefully all our errors are gone there right So we've actually got it now. Any other errors, folks? That was a long one. But that looks happy, right? Anyone see any other errors? No. Um, did you try to compile already or, or not? No, I was just checking to see if there's any errors first, but let's compile. Um, damn it, I wish I could. You want to see the? Uh, I'm just going to share the terminal. Everyone's got to be nice and not run commands. <laughs> read <laughs> only or read one. Right. I wonder what happens if I, I'm going to try read only again. Um, do me a favour, uh, Weston. Just see if you can run ls. If I can run ls. Yeah. List. Just type ls return. No, no, it, it asks me to request read write access. So. Right, so it is working. Because when I tested yeah, yeah, it yeah. before, I tested it on myself, but it's in the same machine. So it obviously knows the difference. So, so I can I, obviously I can, write I can't that. Run, uh, I can't run my Bitcoin mi miner in your machine anymore. Are you sure? <laughs> you just say that, aren't you, really? You've already, you've already hacked me. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm dead, man. <laughs> right, so um, I'm just going to build this again then. Oh, where's my history gone? Why have I lost that? Have you been messing with my history already? <laughs> oh, right, we've got a few. So let's um, let's see what we got. Uh, unresolved import, create flash device. Okay, so this is main RS 2717. Twenty seven seventeen news crate flash device. Uh, okay. It's control flash device, is it? What do we pull in here? Crate control flash device. No, that's not. That's part of flash. Not control. 
Um, is that what we need to do, maybe? Flash. Use flash. Use freight. Flash device. Flash. Maybe I can do this. to write over flash. It annoys me when that happens. Okay. Now, is that okay? It's not squiggling it. Was it squiggling it before? And we just didn't see. Let's just run it again. Uh, is it recognizing the the QSPI thing? It's got a problem with that. Look, five use SPMI SPMS thirty two QSPI. So this is in flash dot RS uh, line five. It doesn't like what five twenty seven nine twenty seven five. Source flash RS colon five. Flash RS colon five. Ah, it's this one. Oh, this is complaining because we are not using these, right? We will be using these soon. Um, if I put that here, that might solve that problem temporarily. Rust being pedantic because we're not using those things we're importing. Oh, deny warnings. Right. Okay. I'm not going to do that because that undoes everything. So let's just take those out. Have a second. We can add them back in. Again. Okay, we're left with one. Let muck equal flash SSS. So our constructor here is wrong at 154. It's passing in three parameters and expecting just two. So if we look at our flash device, new, here, we're only passing in two things, one of which is uh, a select pin and then the HSPI type which contains a whole bunch of pins, but for some reason we're passing in three. Doesn't like missing structure fields. Oh, well, how did we delete that? That must have been there before, right? That should be the HSPI or whatever. No, that should be SPY HSPI. It was working for the ID before, so what have we changed? Must I accidentally deleted something? But it's not showing any changes to that effect. This isn't green. Is it not that you have added var? Uh, yes, but in the new, remember when we did the new, 
the things we're passing into are just these two. Yeah. The structure it returns has a flash structure, which includes the var. So we're not passing this, the flash structure in, we're passing components that we need for the flash structure, but only two of them. Yeah, because the, this, this third one that we need, we're creating locally. But if you look at this line of code, it's saying this is the thing we're passing in, FSS, which is a select pin. But for the spy, we're not actually passing anything in. Now, that would have had to be there for the ID to work. Somehow, we're missing something that was there before. As if we've changed something. Yeah? Are you with me? But it, if you <coughs> if you hover over the red line, it says missing structure fields yeah. dash bar. Yeah, it's missing the HSPI part here. Ah, okay, I see it. Um, so is it that that should be? We seem to have deleted something accidentally somehow because it must have been there before, right? I can't recall. <laughs> so that, that's what's confusing me is how did we change that? It would have been working before. Uh, isn't it? This is the spy. Which isn't a HSPI, it's something else. It's a different type. This is really weird. How did it work before? Spy is the right thing to pass in here, but spy isn't a HSPI. It should be a spy. I think I've just, um, I know what I've done here, I think. Uh, this, I think I've changed the definition. And this should actually be. should be a colon spy. That should be a like a like that. It should be to work it out itself. But the type I think I've changed. This is the type here. Can you see? Um, let me just quickly, if I look, I don't understand why this isn't indicating a change. It must be here somewhere. That has got to be wrong. I think. Let me look at the structure, how that's structured. See, it's using HSPI there. And HSPI is not the same. Type in flash is defined as an FPGA. In FPGA, it's not defined. But in flash, it is defined. In FPGA, it has 
two fins and QSPI. So that is right, it is HSPI. But this type here may not be visible. Okay, I think I see the problem. This needs to be in main. So we need to bring this in. See, the problem is Rust isn't seeing this type that we've defined here in main. Because previously that was defined in main, presumably on the last build. And when we refactored that into its individual files, it lost track. So I'm trying to bring it in here, but it's not part of Flash because it's not recognizing this as part of Flash for some reason. C pub struct flash device. Why can't I see HSPI in here? Oh, let me save. Maybe it's just not picked it up. No, still complaining here. When I hover over it, what does it say? What type? And you, oh, I'm being a dickhead. Excuse me. It is pulling it in, but it's saying I'm not using it anywhere in the code. And the reason I wanted it there is because I did want to use it here, where we're creating the flash. No. Where do we create the flash now? I've lost it. Here. SPI is the name and I need to pass in SPI. Because it's not automatically associating that name with it. Because they're the same name I shouldn't have to do that I don't think. But for some reason because the types changed or it didn't know what the spy was. It's had a problem with that. See, that shouldn't be spy, that should be H spy, maybe. That type. Let me just save this, see if it's happy, or oh, it's still having a problem. Um, but you were saying that, so the. Um the var thing is then an output to flash, correct? Yeah, so if we go back to this, right, so when it creates the new structure as a singleton, 
right? What it yeah. does, what it returns is a flash structure. But then doesn't that mutable need to be different? Because you say let mute flash equals flash. Could that be that it's missing there? What do you think it's missing, Reston? So, um, yeah, if we go back to uh, FPGA uh, .rs. No, 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 sorry. Uh, you, should be able to manip you should be able to manipulate the code there, show him and show him where, right? Yeah, but I, I lost sure. track. <laughs> oh. Um. <laughs> it's in main.rs, line 154, one sec. This one, you mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I don't think you, because are you not assigning the output of flash to, to that lowercase flash? I, I don't know how that works, I'm not 100% no. sure. No, right, so by what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new flash structure. And the but way- Didn't you say new or something like that? No, this is, this is the same, you don't need to do right, that rush. this, internally will call new ah, okay okay so what this this whole thing will return a new structure effectively yeah it's a but structural th th this is um it's like a constructor from classes basically. yeah so you can think of um because it's all the way that rust is it's all decomposed here when i'm saying implementation flash what i'm saying is these are the methods that operate on the structure flash, of which there's a standard one called new, which is like a creator. But it does more than that. It's actually creating a singleton because it's going to own that. So that it can only be one, I think. But forget whether it's a singleton or not. Basically, it takes these as parameters. Yeah. This new function is what's called when we do this and what's returned is a flash item in this case it's this item here so it returns those two things we had as inputs which is SS and SPI yeah but it also returns well, it returns a flash structure which consists of a VAR an SS and SPI these two values come from what's input and this is created when it runs dynamically, yeah, which is a new action uh, object. But what's confusing me here is the reason we have just there's a bit of history here. The reason that we have this is because we needed to abbreviate this type into something that was simpler. Okay. Um, and the best way of doing that is creating a type alias. That's what this is. It's a type alias for all of these different types grouped together. Because this type is very complicated. Yeah, this type is actually an SPI which contains an SPI2 port type because the individual SPI ports have their own type, believe it or not which consists of a pin type of which one of those is on port B pin 13 in alternate push pull mode or internal alternate mode 5 which happens to be spy push pull but if you had to write that every time that you wanted to pass something in as a type it would be unreadable so we use HSPI as a type alias but HSPI gets replaced by all of this yeah so when we define that in our structure, flash structure here, all of that will be replaced by all that stuff at the top. Okay. Now we're creating a aforementioned structure here when we do this. Yeah, by doing an SPI new, that's what it returns. It's the same structure as the HSPI. Yeah. And this variable of what's returned is called SPI. 
when we create our new flash objects there's two things we pass in which is the chip select pin SS right and the SPI pin which happens to also be called SPI in the structure so I'm saying in this new structure I'm going to pass in the FSS flash chip select pin which is defined somewhere up here I don't know where there that one that's going to be passed in to here that one so the SS structure the SS part of the flash structure will be this will be uh, this will be assigned to that and then the SPI structure will be assigned to the internal thing called SPI here I think I'm saying but is it saying that or is it saying that when I create let me just check when I create the ice So it's something similar happens. Well, in fact, I'm saying new here. Maybe that's why it's different. Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe I do need. But why was it working before if that's the case? Let me just try that. Let's see if it stops complaining because that might be interesting. Is it colon colon or dot? being that stupid that I just needed it to do that. Now I have two different construction types. Look, there's two ways of creating that structure dynamically, right? The way I'm doing it with the ice is this way. And the way I'm doing it with the flash is different. So let me just change that and make those the same. Maybe this gets me out of jail and enables us. Oh God, don't do that. It's too clever for its own good, this editor. If I do that, oh no. overriding what I want you to do. Naughty thing. What happens if we do this? So that they're both opposed in the same way here without types. So let's use the same structures. <coughs> So it gives me the same thing, but it's still complaining. Cannot construct flash with struct literal syntax due to inaccessible fields. Um, did you save the file? Wait a minute, I'm just thinking. Yeah, well it's done. It's, it's taken it, finally. But it's guessing this type, but it's not guessing that type. Can you see? Interesting. I didn't write that SS, it's put that in itself. That's why it's in purple, by the way, on mine. But well, your colour's going to be different. But it's not guessing that that is HSPI there. Anyhow, it's happy. Fuck me, that was difficult. Excuse my French. Good job this isn't chilled in the same. Well, yeah. And it wasn't um, French either, I know. Okay, we've got something else now. In fact, Removing that has caused all sorts of other problems. Oh joy. Unused import HSPI. So it didn't actually need that at all. <laughs> After all of that. God, that was a big circle. Wasn't it? <laughs> that wasn't yeah. the problem at all. There you go. Uh, what else didn't it like? The lint level here, blah, blah, blah. Unused variable buff. Flash RS. 
24. Okay, well, one way that we can do this temporarily is using this trick. I don't think you can't do that with an array, though, because it can be made. <laughs> right, what else? Unused variable buff. Unused variable read main.rst. This is just Russ being pedantic. We will catch up, folks. I know it's taken a long time for us to get here. Doesn't like read because we're not using it. So let's cheat and do that. Um, we should be seeing these squiggly things, and we're not noticing it. Read, what else did we see? Variable does not need to be mutable. Slash RS68. because we're not changing it. Okay, that will change. Well, wait a minute. That will definitely be changing. So I'm just going to say head, e head equals something else. You're missing a, a comma dot or dot comma. A uh, semicolon. It's now complaining because we're not using it. <laughs> Let's change it before that is read. <laughs> God, this is the only problem when you're using Rust. I mean, yeah, it's good when it runs because you know the stuff's done, but it's fucking annoying. <laughs> Right, so head, what else did we miss in here? The limit level is defined there. Right, so that's now saved. Let's try compiling again. Um, is everyone else still awake? <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, do ap I do apologize, folks. You know, starting with Black Crab probably wasn't the oh. easiest thing to do. We should have just started with a bit of Python. <laughs> it's very forgiving. Anyhow, it's now running, look. Hey, right. so let, let's go Yay. back. Yeah, let's go back then. Uh, um, sorry, Laurie, you were trying to say something. Let's go Aren't back to what you said. Are we supposed to be said. printing a byte? Are we supposed to be printing a value of a byte? Um, that's a good point. And why aren't we doing that? That's a very good point. So I'm just going to stop it. Um, you're quite right. Why aren't we seeing this? Yeah, maybe it's hanging. What does it say? Are we finished? Um, for the moment, let's just do a return actually as well. This run. Let's. Let's make it set buff. Uh, let's make it set one of these characters, right? On buff. I'm reading buff here. Um, in this case. We're doing a slash read. No. We're doing a lower level command than that. Right, let's just cheat for the moment. Forget forget all the command stuff. When we call run here, let's just change buff before we do anything. Um, 
three. Zero. That's oops. Let's get zero. Set the zeroth byte uh, equal to what are we going to set it to? Something odd like and not FF because we're going to use that. Let's just set it to one. I was going to say seven, but yeah. Yeah, okay. right. Seven's good. It's a prime. <laughs> Semicolon. Right, so we're going to actually change that now. I don't know if that's actually going to make any difference. I don't think that's going to solve our, our problem, by the way. But let's just run it anyhow, right? Um, yeah, that doesn't change our output. Let's just quit that. So it's still doing something else that we're missing. Um, so let's just step through and think where we are. Um, let's just double check what we're calling here. So we're ignoring the return value, but we are doing flash run. And we're passing in flash device read Passing in this buffer. Um, is it possible to use the debug capabilities of the ST here? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so what we could do is check some values here. So if we run this, um, mind you, have I got debug turned on? Because the USB doesn't work well with debug. I'm, I'm running a release here. If I run with debug, what happens? Sometimes creates. Oh, no, it won't Runs work. Runs out of memory, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because there's very little flash in here. Oh, didn't like that. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, it's true. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I better not do that. Mind you, can you... Oh, that's interesting. Can you actually run release with a... I haven't break tried it point? yet. Are we there? I don't think it's possible. Or is it? I think it needs to put things in. It, it should come up on the. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything. No. I don't. I, for all intents and purposes, I don't think that's working. So. No. No, you, you can see that the step into, step over, and things are, are uh, shaded. Yeah. L let's assume not, unless we're running debug. Um, so, one minute. So, we, we, we are seeing this right but we're not seeing this um so it's hang it's hanging in run is it well possibly we don't know what it's doing but we're certainly not seeing anything now if can you put a bunch of uh, other print statements somewhere else that well, you can so you can track it we can but i was just going to try not calling that to see what happens right now it's going to complain I'm not using count. Err. Um. We'll just comment out 209 and 210 there. Why is it Those complaining about variable not does not needed. need to be mutable? Err. God, that's so annoying. Right, okay. Just remember to put these back. Right, let's just make Rust happy. Make the pedant happy. And now if we run that, let's just see if it actually gets to that statement. Right. Could not compile unused inputs. That provision is not like flash device. No, because we're not using flash device anymore. Here. <laughs> God! <laughs> Pedant, it doesn't like this kind of debugging. You've got to be organized with this stuff, you know. Um, uh, how can we fake that? Uh, oh. Okay. Let's create that. Yeah. Okay. 
here we go, temporarily, and then replace that with command. Are you happy now, Rust? Yeah, it's complaining about the count. Count? 213, line 213. Oh yeah, because I renamed it. You've got underscore count. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, sorry. What am I talking about? I shouldn't even be using that line, right? Not for this test. I hope you're all learning Rust here, eh? This is good. Yes, yeah, that no works, problem. right? That, that works. So that's what's messing with it, right? So we know it's this. So let's, you know, let's put this back in. Um, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So it should now you be moved happy back. With. Which? Which? Buffer needs to be moved again. But, uh, oh, yeah. Good point. So we're back to normal, right? Now we've got to work out. So it's doing flash run. Um, I saw a red line in command. <laughs> oh, okay. Because it's a U8. No. Where did you, you see the red line? Time. It knows it's a U8 because it knows what that is. No, no, it's uh, above when you say 0x00. Zero zero zero. Oh, I that think one. it's because you're yeah. double defining. Oh, right, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Where did that come from? That's being used for. Where is that being used for? It's not being used, is it? Right here? No. Yeah, but this, you're this overwriting it, right? Uh, this was there before, right? Because didn't, it used to be one of these. Here, look, we're passing it out. Right, I need to change the name of this, it's conflicting. This is shadowing, that's what Rust will do, it will shadow, shadow that variable because it's a new type. We'll actually replace the one, one above. It's called shadow, variable shadowing. I just need to give it a different name so it doesn't confuse it with that one. Okay, are we good now? Maybe that's why it wasn't working. Oh, mind you, we didn't have command before. Right, so now what we've got to do is look at uh, the run. Because it's obviously having a problem here. It's setting the command to command. What, wait a minute, let me check the type. U8. Uh, are you able to debug this? Uh, no. Nope. Um, not at the moment. Um, this is one of the problems with starting with this because the USB um, well it's not because of the USB it's because for some reason and I haven't worked out how to solve this yet when we put it into debug mode it creates this massive image that doesn't fit in the flash uh. um, hold on I'll show you so if we do this but without uh, release, I think, is that by default debug? Yeah, look. Oh, wait a minute, this is some other thing. Yeah, Rust LLD error. This is a link error. Text will not fit in region flash. Because for some reason, the text create, the debug creates so much shite that um, it doesn't fit anymore uh, okay so that's the reason we're not doing that and I need to we well we need to find out why that is actually but not tonight because that's let's not go down that particular rabbit so hole uh, that's what's preventing us from running in so presume but your hanging problem looks like the loop at line 49 Yes, probably this. Good spot. 
So let's just comment that out and see, shall we? Because we've got a whole bunch of stuff in there that we're not really using. Um, yeah, so let's just save that and then run it. That may be a good spot. Yeah, we're good now. We're getting that seven back, that prime number. Although it doesn't need to be uh, formatted like that. Funky. Let's just change that and then I'm going to let you do some stuff, Laurie. Because you were talking about something else. Let me just see what that looks like. Might be a bit more reasonable. Yeah, 07. Cool. Right. So, Laurie, what were you saying before, my friend? What did you want to fix? Something difference between the FPGA and Flash or something? Your commands that you've got, you've got two set of Flash commands. You've got the uh, STM Flash commands, and you've got the SPI Flash commands. Uh, show me. Um, we don't really need. Can you show me? If you select it, select one of those. I'm not sure where they are now. Uh, I just want to see. I can't remember where you got. I can't remember where. What I'm interested find. in is if you can drive. Basically, what happens if you try and drive this? Yeah. Uh, the commands maybe, but the fla the flash commands are in the flash file called flash device there's a flash device structure no not the flash not the flash commands the, yeah. the commands to right i think most to, of those the us the usb right have a look in control command yeah see if you can click on control.rs if you click on that does it change for everyone i'm not seeing any change um you can choose who you're following I've Oh, okay. So how tab. do we how do we do that, Weston? Have you so already seen where that's done? Open the live done? share tab on the bottom of that, where where you see the f the files. Yeah, hold on. And I participants okay. here. Sorry, no, no, no. Uh, on on the on the no, no, no. Where where you were? Where I were. Yeah, ex it's exactly that. If you double click now on William, you will follow William. If you click on Laurie, you'll follow Laurie. These ones. No, the, the, um, for Lori it will be, or for William, it will be the yellow ball. Yeah, but if I just, what, I just click on that? Yeah, yeah just, just click on, on mine, Laurie. for example. Okay. Well, I, ju I just clicked on Lori, so now Lori's driving, right? No, 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 you, you, you don't choose the driver, you choose who you follow. Everybody okay. has to click on Lori. Sorry. My bad, I'm with you. So I'm now seeing what Lori's seeing, right? Yeah, me too. Cool. Did you hear that, Will? Are you seeing control.rs? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So the issue I was talking about is you've got you've got these you've got that command, STM flash right, and you've also got SPI flash right. Yeah. So uh, these these commands I don't, are I don't think we need for USB. I don't think we need both of those. Yeah. So, it's, are you saying there's a duplicate? Why the why the well, it's confusing because. Wh which one are you talking about? Sorry, are you talking about two? Well, I, don't, I don't think you need the STM flash right because we're not going to be using these commands to write to the S. The STM flash is presumably the built-in STM flash. That's correct. Yeah. So I. Uh, so I just wondered why you've got those there, because we're only using the F and flash. It, it was it was just to enable uh, the that possibility, you know, of you know being able to move data into the STM flash if we needed to. I know at the moment we're just using that for programming. I just but yeah, you can remove them. Yeah, it doesn't I thought, matter. I thought it was a bit conf well, we don't particularly want to renumber them. 
because uh, you already got those operationally. Because we, we because yeah, we've got the QSPI one, the Python code that's using that number three at the moment. Yeah. Um. Well, we've got a choice. I, I mean, you you, you could that. you could comment them out, for example, for now, and then we could refactor it later. Or it doesn't matter. You don't have to start at one. No, Both. that's true. The but one and two could be used for something else later want, if we wanted to. Do you want those? As, are you ever going to want those? It's, uh, it's just a bit confusing because. The SPI flash is actually STM32 SPI flash. Yeah. So um, I was just so being comprehensive, trying to think of the ones that we'd need. So the answer is we don't need that necessarily. I mean, can anyone think of any use cases where that would be useful? I mean, there's not much. There isn't much flash there, is it? Because we're no. We can't even fit our debug image in it. We're fine. We just, but we just found just found that we filled it up as we tried to run debug. Yeah. So, so I don't think we're ever going to. Well, just delete them. Want a command to write to that? We can always yeah, use those. We can always use those uh, values later. Yeah. Get rid of it. So they're deleted now. Yeah. I'm seeing exactly uh, what you're seeing now. How do, so. I, how do I do? Can you save? Do, do you want me to save it? Well, can you save it? Control S and discover. <laughs> I wonder. It, control if S. you do control save. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just you, did, you just, just changed one of the files now, on my disk. <laughs> yeah, I can I can run my right. my Bitcoin now, miner again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Next time I run, <laughs> debug this. <laughs> yeah, we're going to run uh, Weston's Bitcoin miner. He's already inserted it in there somewhere. This is yeah, quite. Um, this is um, quite dodgy, yeah, isn't it? From the security <laughs> point of view. Your your whole library, your whole library is now two gigabytes now. <laughs> yeah, anything right? Anything you can run on is only going to run on the. Uh, the Black Ice NXT, Black Edge NXT, mate. It's not going to run on my machine. <laughs> Technically, you can't run anything, I don't think, because you can't get to the terminal. And it, and we can't get to the terminal, and we can't issue, we can't tell. Well, that's true, the, but so he right. knows that I'm going to run it to test whatever we're doing, uh, right? <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> so, we all yeah, so you can save files for his disk, and then yeah. when he runs. <laughs> Yeah, but but these things aren't being run locally on my machine. They're being run on the dev kit, right? Yeah, that's uh, true. That's you true. know so this one get, below. Get Wi-Fi for it. <laughs> to, to so, so, so you can you can try bit mining on that if you like. <laughs> it may take a while. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, anything else, Laurie, that you uh, um, wanted to have a play around with or change or? But that. No, that that's all I was thinking of. But I think I've now broken main dot rs because those values were probably being used. Well, let's have a look, shall we? Um, shall I do a compile and run the Bitcoin miner? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my FPGA is really busy. Oh no, it's not because it didn't is compile. It up a lot? <laughs> <laughs> Right, error, no associated item. So where is it referring to this? Main RS.274. This is probably in the USB main loop, I expect. I may have put it in to that yes, so when it wasn't necessary. So we, no, so we well, wait a minute, go on, you, you delete so it. We, you should be, we then, you're driving, Laurie. You can take then, that out. So we then need to, we then need to delete that. So I've deleted it there, so I'll save it. <clears throat> yeah. So do you want me to compile again? So, yeah, compile it again, yeah. Let's see if that fixed it. Oh, it's got another problem here. What's this? Is it in more than one place? Control.rs. Have a look at Control.rs. Oh, it's because you deleted the STM flash read, I think, no? <laughs> yeah, same thing. It, there's a command. What did I? What did you delete? Yeah. Oh, did I leave too much? For control that? V, yeah. Laurie, control V, see what you 
Wait a minute. What, what is it that he deleted that he shouldn't One have done? More. There's the read. Didn't oh, he want to remove no, the read? I meant to delete it. Yes, I did. Yeah. So yeah. You, you did he the was right supposed thing. to delete them both. Yeah, yeah. That should be fine. Yeah, that. That the that error. Is yeah, this is another error. Delete. So if you get rid of those, again. And do a save. Right. And then. I do. Wait a minute. I, I have to introduce. Oh no. Then. Th this is this is something to do with two seven eight two seven eight ah wait a minute wait Maybe you haven't saved, Laurie. Maybe the local version doesn't think that. Yeah, hold on. What is your mark? What is your say? Well, I'm just trying to re try and remember which one I'm looking at. So if I do unclick Laurie's and look at my Control RS, or what I think, that looks like it's deleted. Right? But when I run this compile, it seems to be referring to 278. It, well, let me look at the, no, I'm looking at the wrong file. Uh, did, you did do a save, didn't you? Sorry. Have you, you, S, let me yeah. just run it again. Maybe it's just not picked it up. Hold on. Oh. Yeah, that was all it was, mate. So, uh, it's still doing what it should do, which is good, right? So, what what else did you have? Was there anything else that you noticed that you wanted to do, or is anyone else noticed something that we need to um, address at this point? Nowhere near <laughs> That's what recommending you remove any code. Yeah, I don't think I'm qualified enough for that as well. Okay. Uh, Laurie, anything else you see? Well, with this, we've read that value seven. Were we not really trying to read the first byte of the, uh, of the flash to check that it had an FF in it? Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We, we hadn't gotten around to that yet because we were doing something because you noticed something. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how, how close we were to that. Did we? Okay, well, we can go back to that. We let, let, let's go back to that now because we've um, at least addressed that annoyance. Yeah. So at the yeah. moment, what we're doing is... Uh, we're just returning. Hold on, let me look at run. We're setting this here, right? Clearly, we don't want to do that. We want to get an FF in there that is a result of a read. So let's have a look at the. Um, uh, if we look at the ID command. Hold on. I am driving again, aren't I, everyone? You can see what I can, I'm doing. So this command, this function here that returns the ID is talking, is effectively sending a command and reading back results. Yeah. So the way it does that is it calls uh, transfer. Yeah. So first of all, it pulls the select line low. Do you want to go? Bear with me a sec. Let me just deal with the cat. You just have a look at that code, guys, and you can see how it's working. And I'll be back in a sec.
more water will be able to ice. So um, you can see what's happening there. We're um, in order to talk to the device to send the command. We're taking the chip select line low. Then we're initiating init initiating a SPI transfer, and then we're bringing the SS up high. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing is we're transferring this command. So uh, the IDC here is an array, uh, in this case, of up to four bytes, initially set to zero, that we're going to use in the transfer, which expects to receive a mutated version of a four byte uh, command. And then the second part of the transaction is we do a read is the read ID which is reading from a register what, what, what are you looking at at the moment all right Alan, can you not you you, can you not see what I'm highlighting are you you did you, you, you switch on his circle lorry uh, if you go to live share you click on live oh. share and then you click on all right I've got it okay. yeah sorry yeah, I should it. I should I should have um, said something when we switch back I'll have to get used well, to I doing that. I never switched anything. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you switch when you. Well, I switched when you went live. But yeah, you're right. You didn't. Yeah. So sorry. Let me just go through that again then for your your benefit. So um, we're we're bringing the select low, and then we're doing an SPI transfer, and we're taking the uh, SPI high. Now the first thing we're sending first transfer we're setting our command the first byte of this array that we're passing into the transfer as being the flash resume yeah command which wakes it up can you remember when we did this before you had to wake the device up sometimes yeah. um, yeah. then then the second section here we're actually sending the read ID command so it looks exactly the same, it's just a command that's changing here. Before we take the select low, do the SPI transfer, and then take the select high. And then the last thing we do is we look at what gets returned. So because this is a transfer, what that means is not only is it sending stuff out, but it's also right reading things back in. Yeah. So the IDC, which we are sending as a referenced, mutatable referenced array of four things, that gets written to by the results. Yeah. So after we've done this uh, read ID, what's happened is we've effectively uh, even though this is only one byte, the first byte, this actually does the clock for four bytes, I think. If you look at the data sheet, what is returned is uh, three bytes. Yeah. So the write out is the first byte, then it runs the clock three times eight times to read in uh, three lots of bytes or three times eight clock cycles, 24 clock cycles. And it writes those to the IDC. In fact, it writes all of them. So even when we're sending the command out, the first byte in the IDC zero that we've set to read ID will actually be overwritten by whatever comes back as it's writing that out, which will normally be zero because the device hasn't received the whole command at that point. Yeah, Or it might be FF if they're pulled up. Yeah, But we ignore that. So when we look at the return values, we're ignoring IDC array index zero because that will be the four bit, uh, sorry, the eight bits, the first byte that are clocked in as we're clocking out the command. Are you with me guys? Or do I need to do a diagram? I can't use my uh, pad by the way because the software is not working at the moment. 
Have I lost everyone? Um, nope, I, I can think hear you. No, no, no. Uh, no, I'm being asked to rejoin, so... Oh! Maybe had an okay. internet issue, perhaps. I, you, you dropped from the list, uh, yeah. William. Okay. Oh, now I'm back, I think. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Huh, I guess I had a drop on mine. Anyhow, so we have this uh, IDC array of four bytes, yeah? Um, and when we do a transfer, in this case, the first byte is already set to read ID instruction. But that gets replaced by whatever's being returned as we're clocking through, because we're calling a transfer, which is bidirectional. Um, so we're going to... a full duplex one. Yeah, right here, well, right? yeah, because we've got spy out and spy in. We've got... Uh, Muzzy out and you know miso in so your protocol is set up for full duplex in this like this particular device is set up for full duplex right exactly so those four bytes there the first one when we pass it into the function has the command read id but as soon as that's clocked out you know either zero or ff gets clocked in Probably FF. While it's, it's if being it's clocked out, right? Full, but yes. full duplex would be... Yes. Okay. The first byte. And then the other bytes are the actual response. So the spy flash, having received this read ID command, then clock, then on each clock cycle, sends out the free expected bytes. Uh, oh no, this is half duplex then, because your data is coming in on a separate... Uh, at, no, so it's full duplex. Byte. Because we're clocking out on one pin and clocking in on another pin. But what's being clocked right. in but as we're clocking out is just zero or FF. Uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah, that's called a dummy byte. No, I know that no, like the no. The dummy no? byte will be another byte that gets inserted to give it time before it starts clocking the actual data back. In this case, it's fast enough to be able to do that because okay, it doesn't so it is because it doesn't it's, have to go. Returning. It doesn't have to go to memory to read this. It just reads that from a local register. Okay. I'm guessing. Right. So there's no dummy bytes in this. If you look in the uh, at page 32, 31, and 32 of the data flash. There's the table of what it returns, but if you look at the timing diagram, you can see what's going on. 32. So at the top of the so page, the 32. So the code goes out. Okay, it is half duplex because you're, you're sending data and you're not expecting anything coming back from the slave. You pull the data after the slave is responded. That's half duplex. Full duplex is if you're sending out data and data is coming in at the exact same time. Um, so this is half duplex. No, no, it's full duplex. But Are what is sure? yeah? It, so if you look at that timing diagram, that uh, yep. the lines, it's not showing any value underneath the nine FH for the SO pin. Right. It's showing yeah. IMP. But that's pulled up. Right. Right. Or it's pulled down or none at all in which case it could be random bits but the point is that value is irrelevant to us but it will still be there I bet if we read that value it won't be probably won't be read ID anymore but it'll I could be, be wrong yeah, it'll be. right I thought full duplex meant that for every byte that goes out a value byte comes in a byte that you care about comes in at the exact same time whereas yeah. in this case on a half duplex you send data out in this case 9fh hex 9f hex but you have to wait for the next eight clock cycles for data actually to come back yeah right that's one way of looking so at it another way of looking at the difference between half duplex and full duplex half duplex uses the same line for in and out Whereas uh, full okay. duplex right. actually uses two lines, one for outgoing, one for incoming. Okay. Yeah. 
Hence my use of the word for in duplex. The, in uh, this case, I mean, S SPI is definitely full duplex. It's just the higher level com uh, protocols you put on top of SPI don't always make use of that. They exactly. all don't always transfer out and transfer back at the same time. So you've got uh, a higher level pro protocol that, that doesn't effectively use the full duplex capability all the time. Um, the people okay. watching this probably aren't going to understand. I wonder if I can... Uh, I can't... I don't think yeah, I have I'm, a I'm writing Spy there. Controller now, and yeah. I'm using the uh, 30, 2317 IO expander, right. and I have to send bytes to it. Even though it's capable of sending me bytes back, none of those are meaningful. I have to wait for the the expander to then send me like what pin I touched on the expander to generate an interrupt and then data comes back even though they're full duplex like you're saying here there's both an input and an output spy in and spy out um, right. it, like Laurie was saying it's a higher level protocol the device itself is not sending data back at the exact same time I'm sending data to it okay now I mean Fair enough. You know, you wouldn't think that the spy device is actually sending anything back. The question is, does the, yeah, like does the spy peripheral on the STM32 know that? And the answer is probably not. So it will probably read like whatever's on the line on the clock edges. Exactly. And like I know that, uh, what is it? Um, temperature devices they're they're fully duplex even at the higher protest you can send bytes and receive data at the same exact time right um, okay so anyhow that's what's Got going it. on here um uh, i slightly lost my train of thought so what we want to do is a different command right we want to do a read yeah so we want to do the same sort of thing that we're doing here, but we want to send the read command, right? So if we look at this, let's just copy this. Uh, actually, let's just copy that. Um, oops. The read command is in page nine of the data sheet. Yeah, I'll find that in a sec, thank you. But in here, where we're doing this equals seven, what we kind of want to do is this sort of thing, but we don't want to use resume. We want to use resume. We want to use uh, read like that, right? Read array, that's called. Um, now, in this case, how does it know? It's always doing four bytes, interestingly. So we might want to change that. Um, and then what we want to set this to at the end would be whatever that value was of IDC. So IDC, um, it might be the first byte, let's say. So it'd be IDC. Uh, one. Now this is actually slightly dumb the way that we're doing this because we're using more than one buffer and what we should probably be doing is passing in a slice of this, a mutable slice of this so it reuses what we've got but let's just forget that for the moment. What I'm thinking is we send this read command and at the moment this seems to be set to read four bytes how does it know how to read four bytes have we hardwired that or is it looking at the size of the array we're passing in yeah look so if we look at this transfer at the moment it's just been written for those simple commands not commands involving address reads yeah so these are like register reads yeah, you know, on this transfer. So we need a slightly different command here. If we were gonna do a memory read, we're gonna need to do a lot more. So which, which what, what was the page um, again, Laurie? Eight, 89. 89. 
No, just nine, just nine. I believe. Page nine. All right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to have a look and remind myself what we're asking it to do. Um, hold on. Ten. Read commands. Read array. O B or O three. I can't remember which one we chose. So if we look at the timing diagram for this, has everyone got to page nine? It's really difficult yeah. because we should be showing this on the stream as well. Yeah, uh, I can see it. I know you guys can see it, but the stream can't. So let me just see if I can temporarily show that because otherwise it's not fair for the uh, guys on the stream, right? Okay. Boom. So what we're talking about folks on the stream is this command. This is the read that we're going to perform. Um, so the first thing to notice is we need to send the opcode, which is that read command. Then we need to send an address, which has to be uh, a 23 to a zero. So that's three times three, three bytes effectively. And then we will receive a byte. So we're going to need a different transfer. This transfer that we have in the code is only designed for reading uh, a register. So let's just go back to the code for a second, change that. Uh, so I'm just going to kill off the browser for a sec. If we go to the code, we probably want to refactor this. So if I refactor this and call this um, this is only applicable for a very specific type of read, isn't it? Um, we may need to change the way this looks. I'm wondering if this low level call to transfer How does it know what the width of that is? How many bytes to read? So this is in the how, right? This internal call to the SPI transfer. Sends words to the slave, returns the words received from the slave. But how many words? How does it know? Does it iterate through this because this is of a fixed length? Because we're not passing a length parameter in. Yeah. So one of the things that we could do is if we look at Let's just have a look at um, STM32. You want to, you probably want to s pass a length in and and do a proper slice of it where you. Well, I'm just wondering how the hell it knows. It's currently taking the H. Sorry, uh, F uh, seven. Presumably that as mute slice gives you the whole of data. So I'm just going to look at the how and I'm going to look at that function and work out how the hell it does it because 
I'm not sure how it does that. How does it know? This is very small. Um, I'm just going to share this link on Discord as well, so I'll just go straight to the um, core. So what we're looking for is transfer, right? New enable transfer all. Read, send. It's this one, it's a template which makes it a bit more complicated. Can you see line 204? Depending on the word size. Wowzer. Depending on the word size. Is this the trait? <coughs> um, so this, because this is a generic, um, does the word in this case mean four bytes? Uh, tell you what, let's look at some usage. Oh. Let's see what they're doing in an SPI example. Big sheet. They're just doing a <laughs> They're just doing a transfer, they're not doing anything fancy. So in this case, um, the buffer they're using is only two, two bytes left. I don't know what that is, so read who I am. So this is talking to an MPU 925.6. Right, so this isn't very good. I wonder, is there a better example? I don't want to get into DMAs at this point. Or a 16-bit transfer. Is there a flash? Oh, that would be internal. I need a spy flash. Can you see a spy flash? I bet they've got a uh, flash example. Yeah, they've got a QSPY flash. Grr helpful. I bet these are all connected by um, <sighs> these will all be QSPY connected flash damn it so there's not an example here with regular flash so the only spy example they've got is that transfer or the DMAs which I don't I really don't want to go down the DMA road this evening um, what does the perhaps this is a bit too mean? much to solve for tonight yeah quite possibly let me just have a quick look at this see if there's any quick clues or anything that we could do uh, what are they doing here they're doing spy right and in this case they're using U16, so yeah, they're just using two bytes, but as a word, and they're using the write rather than the transfer. Um, right, okay, uh, maybe we should call it a day. I need to do some more research on this, um, I guess, unless folks want to carry on maybe doing a bit of research. How are you doing for time guys?
I know we haven't but, done uh, much code wise, but we've done much in terms of actually getting this all to work. Yep. I guess right now what you're looking at is the protocol to, and then once you understand the protocol, you can write the code for it. Is that, is that what's going on? Yeah, so basically the transfer that we've got uh, is only transferring transferring four bits, and if I look at the examples of using the um, STM32 how uh, you know hardware abstraction layer, the only examples that they have are either sending just two bytes in here using the transfer. We're already doing that, but we're doing four, right? But oh, I think there's. Is she gonna say hello? I'm just wondering if it knows how many bytes there are there. What oh, the flash device? The flash device knows how many bytes you're getting it. Um. Uh, this this is all an issue with with the rust how well how, uh, how we know how many bytes you're telling it to transfer yeah i mean uh, it might be clever enough to work it out as such. it might be clever enough to work it out because in this case they're only sending two right how does it know that um. so it might be clever enough to be working that out because this is defined yeah, so that as two but it's not like it's a oh, null terminated well, this, array this is it so how does it know oh, where I the see. end is this is a rust issue and, and not not a protocol issue yeah it might be that it's clever enough you want to send and receive yeah this so you have two bytes in this case that you're trying to send and well in the example i'm looking at here will right right they're using two bytes. In my example, I'm using four. And, and what I'm saying is, if I used eight, would it actually read eight? Right, so my question is, is Rust, when Rust is calling a hardware API on the STM32, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, it, it's written in Rust as well, so. It's written a, in Rust, but Rust But it's setting up registers, drive. right? Okay, but here, so, see when see when we do the key thing here. Let me just. But it's still a hardware device. You're talking about a spy har embedded yeah. hardware spy in the. Um, STM32. STM32. But here's the weird thing, right? Here, look at this function signature. The only thing right. we're passing in is the array. Is the buffer. We're not saying how big that array is. Big it is, right? But can you, go you know, is by transfer method? Yeah. And look but the what? the how, maybe it's clever enough to know that, right? So if we go back here, well, in Rust, buffers uh, arrays have sizes in them. There are no they they had sizes to them. Yeah, well, which so is I'm what I'm thinking. In which case, we might be able to just get away with doing it, right? because um, right, that's why you can't write past the end of an array How, I mean Rust blocks you to begin with because it's type checking but uh, I was wondering to... if the HAL the hardware abstraction layer is actually paying attention to Rust um, structures which will have the embedded length in it and uh, so that must be what it's going on is yeah that STM HAL code has to be looking at is the how also written in Rust? Uh, yeah. Should it be a port from C++? No, no, it's all, it's all written in Rust. All the then way. Then the it's, how it, knows it's, that it's, it's getting to... Rust yeah. all the way is down. So, but it's not obvious from the example because it's using um, <sighs> some clever stuff. Hold on, hold on. I'm... Let me just, <laughs> I can't see what's going on. I can't find out where I am in this repository. Somehow I've zoomed. Control, hold your control. No, I've got, I've got it now. Um, but if I look at the source, right? 
so this is the key thing I mean it sounds like you guys want to continue I'm happy to um, maybe uh, maybe I would say Laurie that wants the HAL to... does know how many bytes you're giving it because you're giving I've, it an array I've... with an embedded size in it I think you might be right so if we look at that call here it's a bit obscure because if we scroll down to where we were before um, transfer here so the implementation here this is a generic definition for the trace right. um, there will be an implementation somewhere down here let me do a find oh, hold on uh, Right, what does it say here, look? Buffer. Yeah, there's buffer 110. Turns data into buffer and writes received data into buffer right after the return of the transfer reference in the ongoing SDI transfer. Please note that the word transfer is used with different, two different meanings here. An SPI transfer or DMA transfer. Uh, as an SPI transaction that involves both sending and receiving data, the method name refers to this kind of transfer. This method, as well as all the other DMA related reference in Bitcoin, all requires references to DMA handlers. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Forget the DMA. We're not doing that. Um, okay, there's got to be something here in the code. Is it line 110 where the buffer is defined? So, yeah, buffer length. I just saw it. About 144, 43. Okay. Yeah, right. Sorry, I went back to 110 because you said 110. This, there, yes. Right there. So it's, it's grabbing the length from the buffer. Yep. So it knows. So it knows, right, so cool. So if we wanted, to do a transfer here of a different dimension, then we just need to pass in a different uh, array, yeah? So yep. this one is hardwired, so that shouldn't be transfer. So I can do what I was originally gonna do, which was refactor this. Um, I don't know how good Visual, Co so Visual Studio Code is. Is it rename symbol or is it, it refactor? It depends on the LSP, the language server that's running. Do um, I do a refactor or do I do a rename symbol? You could try a refactor and see if No refactoring is available. Right, let's try a, just oh, do really? this oh, symbol, okay. right? So if I do rename symbol and I call this uh, register transfer right for example does it then change all the references to that uh, or is it just on my side I didn't see the, I, the the rename feature going on but I guess it did something um, yeah but did it go and check where we're using that so compile it we, see if it blows we up we are calling that from where were we calling that from the ID here, look. See, it hasn't renamed that. That's not renamed yeah. here. Uh, so that's not refactoring as I know it. That's just renaming something, right? But I take it you have the Rust plugin and everything going on. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm, okay. pro I'm probably operating it incorrectly. That's more likely, uh, frankly. Yeah. Um, I didn't write that. No method name register transfer. I just changed it. There. What? Oh, no, no. Ah. Ah. Okay. <sighs> yeah, that's the spy property yeah this we're not using this we're calling it directly 
Yeah, we're not using this thing, so I shouldn't be. So that may have worked. I don't know why that's like that. So, so there are two functions named the, try. Well, or? now this has obviously been written, but we're not using this. We're calling it directly on the SPI. Ah, yeah, okay, I see. So, I see. so if we were to replicate that here, um, where were we writing our bit here? We could use whatever size we want. So if we go back to that data sheet, yeah. Yeah, so first one is. What we need uh, is an opcode, op code, and then we need three address bytes, and then we need the other byte. Bit. So, so, four bytes. so we would need uh, four for the instruction and address, and then another byte, right, for the return. For what you're trying, if it's a read command, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what? Then we copy that. Put that in. Yeah. Now I think Rust defaults to zeros. And we and we don't want we don't want to copy byte zero in this case. We want to. It's the very last byte, right? Yeah. Five, uh, four. So we've now got a five yeah. byte array. Yeah. We're calling the spy transfer, which should cope with that because it's not sizest. <laughs> and it doesn't, I was looking at the spec here and it doesn't show that it needs any dummy bytes on the last byte, so. Yeah. Okay. A dummy byte, like a zero or an FF. Right, I'm just gonna, um, the people watching the stream wouldn't have seen the code we've done here. So let me just turn the browser off because it's obscuring it. So what we've done here is we've made this five bytes long, unlike the previous transfer, which was four. Because we need command that's gonna go in the first byte, byte zero. Then we've got an address, which in this case is all zeros, because we're gonna read the first byte for the first sector, etc. And it will write that into the final byte. So theoretically, this should work, right? And we should get FF, I guess. I mean, it's funny. It's very similar. The protocol is very similar to the uh, IO expander. Okay. That I've been messing around with. Let's do that. Let's just um, see if we can compile and run. That comes back with FF. How surprising. Now, the only problem with that is, well, if there's pull-ups on the pins, it will come back with FF anyhow if it's not sending anything. <laughs> of course, so we could be wrong. That might not Just be the, the, I'm looking at the, the erased the value. Default. Have you ever programmed that? Yeah. No, we haven't programmed the spy, so it's it's okay. as it as out of the factory, right? So that could be right could be wrong we probably won't know unless we write something yep. yeah so what we could do before this is actually do a write yeah yep we should so if we write. write zero first before we do the read or you could now, write this probably uh, won't work five. because we've got to erase first really haven't we that's what yeah, we're, right, that's what right we're forgetting complex, right Right SR. Is it right SR? Is that right? Uh, what page is right, Laurie? Can you look it up? It, oh, 15, Laurie, are you still like, there? Like 15, byte page. Uh, 15. Okay. I'm just scrolling through. Right Wait, navel is just... 6. Page 20, actually. Okay, I'm just scrolling through. Yeah, there it is, page 20, 8.1. And that's just right enable. Uh, well, I don't think we need to do that. Those are security features. What we actually need is the right. Oh, that's the security feature, okay. Wouldn't it be easier to just do an erase? Well, well that's going to give us FF, but yeah. Uh, we will need to do the arrays. 
before we do the write, actually. Uh, do you have to read the page so that when you do the write, you have to write a page? I can you actually write just a single byte? I don't think so. I think it's write page, actually. Let me just get the list of commands, because we should be able to do it from there. That page was the list of commands. It's not far down. Single here. byte up to, OK, it does allow a single byte. Yeah, you can do a single byte. Yeah, you can do from 1 to 256 bytes. 256. Um, where's the list of commands? There we go. And There's a list of commands. FF. So the block erase command. Uh, can we write without doing it? Byte page program. That one, right? Yeah, two, hex 2H. Two so... Wait a minute, what am I doing here? That's right to a register, I think. And what we actually need is page right. Yeah. Are you going to do a page or a byte? No, a page right can be from one. Look, one to 256 bytes. Yeah. If that makes any sense. And I'm gonna send it must them. internally be doing a read then. Okay. I'm I'm Can just it? gonna set these. Wait a minute. I don't want to set the address to seven. Um, I see. I see. Seven point the one. The program. Yeah. Here. Yeah. This actually is the same size. Five bytes. Right. So what we're the gonna do is, is opcode address both and data in. Right. So the last one is what we're writing. Yep. Yeah. And we're going to write that seven that we love. <laughs> so this one's going to do the write. In fact, it's going to do a transfer. Does it matter if it's a transfer or a write? We're not really interested in the return, right? Do you set your flash device on line 58 to a write maybe or something? Or is it a... I'm just wondering if we do, what does that look like? If we do a write, rather than a transfer, because we're not really interested in what it says. Is it all right? Words. Yeah. My guess. Yeah. Like, what did I do wrong here? Do you? I don't think you. Do you really need to pass in a mutable version of your data? No. Is that, is that what the API said? Yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Unused result, but must be used. It's because I'm not doing unwrap. Because it could be error. I guess. There we go. These are uh, this just ignores the error. Yeah. If there is one. Uh, it's a flash. It's a rust peripheral out right, peripheral right. thing, right? Yep. Whenever you do anything, something could go wrong. So you are you gonna turn right around and read from it? Yeah. Or are you just gonna do that on uh, a this is, this call? this is a blocking call. Yeah. So I don't, I, don't I, I don't think we need a delay, but let's, should we see what happens? Well, I was just saying line 58, do you need all of that code? That tr or are you going to turn around and do a read right after a write? Okay. Yeah, might work. Yeah. I mean, let's try it. Although that's not going to work because on line 50, uh, 54, you set it to a page write. You'll need to read. Oh, you did set it. Oh, 59 sets it back to a read. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah. I mean, we're going to still use whatever these values are, which may be a problem. Got it. But this it. should be overwritten on the read. Now, you could double. You could but, like, but, make but that for sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. We should. Because otherwise, what changed it, right? How, did it even call yeah. that? 
that it is, yeah, four. So that's zero. um. Four. four. Let's just reset that, right? Just so that we know we're not sending, we're not supplying the seven that we want to check for, right? Now you want to set that to zero because you're going to read and zero. you want it to change from seven to a from zero to something. There you go. We ready to rock? Yeah. Let's try it. That's returning FF, so that's not working, right? <laughs> yeah, where's your right ad? Maybe it does need a delay. What happens if we run it again? <laughs> does it change? Or is it the same? We have plenty of times to do that if it was waiting. No, it's still FF. We're missing something. Why am I seeing that there? Session chat, I don't know that. Um, you what could, could we be doing of unwrapping, wrong? Could check the return from right. You, it, we it'll, could. It may tell you how many bytes. Um, let me just check. We're doing the address right. That is, I'm just checking the bytes. That's definitely five, right? Um, yes, we could do that. What you have to do actually is this we have to do. Uh, expect. Is it expect? Does it return a, um, ooh, does it return? Well, if you click, let me click on that. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it, only it, doing it. It returns a result. Okay. Yeah, and you would and do the uh, result um, you need to decide on. So the result. Uh, uh, I haven't done it, rust it, in like it, a couple of years. <laughs> I you think too. it's like a, a switch statement or something could parse it for you. Uh, yeah, so wait a minute, what do I, here I need to do. Well, it depends on what right is returning a is result, it right? expect message? Yeah, one of them will. Right. Suppress what does it the does it say here? Since we're a slave, what does it return? Um, returns a result, which may you be do an need error. to do a write enable. Ah, Al, you do need to do right. a write enable. Right, that's the problem. Do Definitely so need a write enable before write. All right, well let's do that first then. So, um, okay. So what we need is we need to do this. Page 20. Uh, yeah, that's need, one byte. Yeah, we don't need two of those. Actually, here. Just you right, should copy right, five yeah. lines. So I need to do this before the right. Um, guys, I'm I'm a bit too sleepy to keep following this. I'm, I think I'm gonna head off. Okay, no problems, Weston. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we'll, prob we'll, we'll probably be doing some more of this. I think this is successful, but I haven't yeah. looked at the video yet. Um, <laughs> please, please post it um, so I can follow what happened after I went to sleep. Okay, no props. We'll do. All right, see you guys. All right, cheers. Bye. Yeah. Um, so here, I want to do this, and that won't be 07, right? That will be something else. So what command do I need? I need enable, right? Is that what you said? It's, uh, I don't know what your flash device is set to. I have right. to go to the structure. Enable, which I haven't included. So let's just go back to that part of the code. I need to add a code in here. So if we go back. 
truck. Damn it. Oh, yeah. uh, it's right it's enable. It's four. Right. It's four. Enable. You sure? Yep. Page 20. Okay. Uh, so two. where's our right oh, enable? Oh, that's disable. Right. Wait, wait, wait. That's disabled. Sorry, six. Six is enable. <laughs> okay. Let's put it in here, right? Right enable. Is there a alt caps function? I don't know what it is in um, yeah, it's shift Visual U. Studio. Is it? All right, too late now. Yeah, I would have. Uh, it's confusing with the two E's Six. in there. Okay. Is it not doing that? Is it because I'm not saved? And you technically only need one byte for that structure. Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? It will just clock the others. But the yeah, I don't know. Um, so if it's one byte. Uh, and you can always try sending more than I'll one. I'll tell you what we could what do. Happens. We could cheat. How about that? Um, you could send a slice. So you're on line 57. You would just give it a slice. I don't know if the hard the how would like that, but <laughs> I'm going to see if I can cheat here and do. Semicolon at the end. And then this can actually. Yeah. Well, you'll need that for the page right, though. You've just yeah, taken I'm out gonna, the page I, right. I'm just going to move it to where it's relevant, basically. Oh. Oops. Because it's not relevant to the one above anymore. Because we're just directly using this array, which we are. Making mutable. Is it just that it needs? Yep. Did you look it up? Well, that's what the timing the diagram. Says. Just right. an opcode. Okay. Um, sorry, viewers. Sorry, stream. I need to get rid of the browser, otherwise you can't see what we've been doing here. Look. So we're going to send this. Uh, uh, we're going to write the write enable. Just the write enable command. We're not expecting anything back we do the page right that's what we've added what doesn't it like here don't need that anymore why is this complaining let me I say put, i put a semicolon there but uh i can't see because you've got your cursors over the end of that there is a semicolon i put one there Oh. Uh, let's see. What wait, wait, what's it say? Variable. Unused result. That's because I didn't do unwrap. Oops. <sighs> Thank you. There we go. That's what I was waiting for. Now it doesn't like this because I don't have unwrap. Ready to rock. Should we try it? Hey! Hey, it worked! <laughs> We're getting back seven. So we've written to the flash and written from the flash. I think that's a good thing to finish on. All right. um, and we'll turn this into something proper later because this is just hardwired like a test without a test wrapper. <laughs> That'll do. 
Thank you, guys. Laura, you still here? That was fun. <laughs> you probably fell asleep. <laughs> He's still online, according to this. <laughs> it's what, like 10 o'clock, maybe? No, no, it's time? much later, 11. that more like 11. Yeah, it's, it's just it's three minutes to 11, so. Oh. That, that, that will do yeah. for the evening. Uh, Laurie's still there, he's woken up. <laughs> so, uh, that will do for tonight, I reckon. And we'll do some more of this. Because this, I think, works. But then again, I'm going to have to review the video. I just hope it makes sense. From the streaming I've, I and learned video a lot box. in this because I've got a, I ordered a spy, a, a ferrite memory, the Spram. Oh, yeah. Um, I've, Adafruit. Uh, yeah. I, the I, Spy. I'm using one of those at work. I haven't actually used it at the moment, but um, we've oh, really? got we've got oh, one cool. of those on one of the devices because we they've had problems. Um, they've had a number of problems with different things, but one of the problems is that um, they write different things to the flash, including logs, and they were uh, because it, they weren't using any kind of wear leveling. They were. They were um, wearing these flash chips out really quickly because they are writing their wow. logs to them so quickly. Um, the endurance is only like ten to the ninth or yeah. something like that. So um, they were thinking of trying out some F ramps, which would could do like trillions or something stupid. Yeah, ten to the fifteenth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you can just keep writing to those suckers, and they don't, you know. Now, if they were doing that, it almost seems like they've got. Um, battery back static ram out there too no. but well it's really complicated this this thing i'm working on at work has more things than you can shake a stick attached to it <laughs> including battery back to sram oh uh, really it has <laughs> it, it has internal it has 10 megabytes of internal sram it has oh, no wow. internal flash it has externally it has fram uh Spy FRAM, it has Spy Flash 16, I think, megabytes or something, maybe a bit more, maybe 64 actually. Um, and it has external SRAM, about I think it's about two meg of it, two megabytes, and that's battery backed. And it has external SD RAM because it's got an external bus on it, and it that's has so an external beautiful. parallel flash, which is really fucked us up big time because wow. we can't use it with the debugger and it's an a9 it's not like a cortex m oh. um how old is this technology i mean this, the whole well thing, the th this new board is very new and it's based around a uh, renesis cortex a9 but the system oh. before it was a um what do they call it cold fire 68000 for Freescale, they started off using 68,000 and that evolved into what is now is it Cold Fire? I can't remember what, but I anyhow, I recognize Cold Fire, yeah. It's is it Cold Fire or Cold Fusion or something like that? Um, uh, I'd never used them, but they were like uh, derivatives of the 68,000 because originally this thing was written 30 years ago for the 68,000, so um. They can't get the damn things anymore, unsurprisingly. So they had to change. <laughs> but uh, yeah. that's your job is changing it. <laughs> yeah, and that's why we got to port all the code, you know, because as you can imagine, it's it doesn't wow. work work the same way. But anyhow, cool. um, we're going off on a tangent. But thank you guys for joining us, and yep. that's all coming together. I think it works, but yeah, let's review the video and see. <laughs> in fact i should probably review it before i upload the youtube version yeah <laughs> uh my rule is i don't edit them because i just I don't have ask time you that if you edited it no i just don't have the time i'd have to set up a uh, editing on here and i don't have any editing software it's a I long time since i edited stuff <laughs> you use what i use blender to edit my videos for my channel blender that sounds like an effects package rather than an editor. It's a it's it's a three D modeler, but it oh, also right, has okay. a fully featured um, video editor in it. Years and years ago, I used to use things like 
Habits and uh, Premiere and another Adobe. program called yeah another program called Edit, which I helped write, but that was a long 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 long, long time ago. That was pre two thousand. So um, yeah, I haven't done that stuff in a long time, so I'd have to put some software on there to do that, which will probably be. There is an open source one, isn't there? I can't remember what it's called. That might run on the open source one. What editor? Oh, there's a couple of them. There's a couple of big, you know, big engine ones where you're like a big production studio. I don't use those. Blender is. There's two of them. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm, I might do that it, one day, but at the moment I try and avoid it because the reason I like streaming <laughs> is I don't have to worry about that, right? Yeah, I just right. we just do some stuff, and then I upload it. No editing involved. Yep. You take it as you get it. <laughs> but in I'm this case, in this case, <laughs> there will be a whole load of crud at the start where we're setting stuff off and doxing ourselves, etc. <laughs> I know. Yeah, if you could just cut that part of it out. <laughs> I, I think in YouTube you can actually change the start point if I remember. I think I've done that before, but um, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. So I might want to check it out before I send it up in case I'm just uploading a whole pile of crap <laughs> Yeah, that you can't hear the audio in or something. <laughs> because I have no idea, right? Um, it could be silent all the way through for all I know. Hopefully not. Yeah, Anyhow, I'll, I'll sure take you, a look. Uh, turn it into black and white before you do that. <laughs> Sepia tone, surely. Yeah, add sepia and black and white. And turn <laughs> What's it going to do with my syntax highlighting in sepia? It's going to be like a solarized theme. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, folks. And yep, uh, later. Let's do it again soon sometime, assuming that the video All works. Right. Otherwise, we'll have to fix it and find another way of doing it. Ciao. Later. <laughs>